Mr. Karthikeyan, Mr. Anup Bose, Mr. Tanmay Chakravarti. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am grateful to the Foundation for Peace, Harmony and Good Governments for having me here. Friends, today the good news is that you can live your life by design. You can shape your results. You can determine your own happiness. But the unfortunate fact is that many of us still live miserable lives, struggling, stuck in limitations. So the question is why? Is it because of the genetic makeup that some of the people are able to make it so well in life? Or is it because of some predestiny? So something is predestined that some people will always, you know, they'll be poor and be controlled by circumstances. Now, these are the questions that need serious considerations. And in this, the most important aspect is investigating the role of the mind. Because mind, for all purposes, is limitless. You know, it can invent all the dangerous weapons, like the bombs, the guns, while it can also superbly bring together all the beautiful pieces and minute pieces to make computers and all the amazing structures that we see around us. But most people have limited their mind. You know, they wake up on a daily routine to report for work. They master their work so much that they don't even need to think when performing their duties at work. So the life has got stuck in a rat race. But as they work, they have left the greatest duty of humanity, and that is to engage in deep thought. Your thoughts have energy. They have power. They have limitless potential. Your thoughts can even surprise you because of what they can produce. You know, the people who have made very well in their lives, they have proved that mind is the masterpiece that God has given to humanity. In fact, scientists have discovered now that the average person is using even less than 10% of their mind. In fact, the professor of biophysics at the MIT estimates that our central nervous system contains 100 million cells, each of which has the storage capacity equivalent to that of a large computer. And Professor Addy at the Brain Research Institute at the UCLA, he says the ultimate creative capacity of your brain may be, for all practical purposes, infinite. Napoleon Hill, in his book titled Think and Grow Rich, he wrote, we are what we are because of the vibrations of thoughts which we pick up and register. Another motivational speaker also wrote that your mind is the engine and room and it is also the assembly plant for all your life processes. If you manage your mind, you can manage your life. Finally, I, I'll say that the words stop selling book, the Bible, what it says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Need I say more to prove the power of your mind? So there is no excuse to live a life of mediocrity. In fact, I would think it's a crime to live a life below your potential because you're depriving and robbing humanity of the great resources that they could have benefited from you. Way back in 1892, our Swami Vivekananji, when he was asked about the secret of his very sharp memory, 
he spoke again of the power of the mind. He says, power of the mind arises from control of forces of the body. Idea is to conserve and transform the physical into physical, into mental and spiritual energies. He said the great danger is there in spending the forces of the body in reckless pleasures. Because thereby, you lose the retentive faculties of your mind. He laid great stress on the power of the mind. He says the total energy that we have is the sum total of the interminable cosmic energy as well as our physical energies. It depends on us what use we put it to. If we utilize this energy only to satisfy our bodily cravings and emotional longings, we are not doing much to add value to it. Because this leaves us with little constructive energy then. He said that in living an unenlightened life, we seldom pause to pay attention to this tremendous latent energy which mostly remains buried at the base of our spinal cord, he said, which is trapped in a so-called Muldhar Chakra. And many enlightened yogis have been able to tap into this physical and mystical source of energy. But it responds only to conscious practice. And it needs a deliberate activation that requires focus and discipline. Once this evolved source of energy becomes available to us, it opens up vistas which otherwise seem invisible to us. Swamiji's persona, we all know, was a shining example of a radiant mind and a robust health. In one of his discourses, he fervently pleads for the powers of the mind, saying, how has all the knowledge of the word been gained? But by the concentration of powers of the mind. The word is ready to give up its secret if only we know how to knock and how to give the necessary blow. The strength and the force of the blow comes through concentration. There is no limit to the power of the human mind. The more concentrated it is, the more power is brought to bear on one point. So we need only to awake up to this power and work towards God realization through it. Friends, we can all follow his teachings to understand how the subconscious mind works and how wisely its powers can be harnessed to improve all the areas of a life, be it health, be it finance, be it career, be it relationships to increase clarity, to increase decision-making powers, to enhance motivation, self-confidence, to boost our performance, and to improve our memory, and so to achieve our goals faster. And even to quit unhealthy habits, and even to relieve stress instantly, to holistically heal ourselves. And I would say most importantly, to enrich and empower our relationships. Of course, besides earning more money. In today's modern lifestyle guru, Dr. Deepak Chopra, we are all aware that he is a pioneer of integrative medicine and personal transformation. He's told about a very easy, easy method for harnessing this powerhouse. He's told us that one of the keys to harnessing this potentially unlimited power of the mind is to expand your level of self-awareness. When your awareness is contracted, the flow of energy and information throughout your body mind is hampered. You tend to stay stuck in toxic emotions like regret, resentment, jealousies, and even self-pity then non-nurturing habits like overeating, not exercising, etc. can take hold. 
because there's a f feedback loop between your body and your mind. It has turned negative. And in such a situation, only stress hits you instantaneously. On the other hand, when you expand your awareness, your energy flows freely. You're more flexible, you're more balanced, you're more creative. You view yourself and the word with more compassion and understanding. You have more energy and you're open to new possibilities. At this level of awareness, you have all the power you could possibly need to create a new reality, which could be a reality of vibrant health, of great well-being for yourself. He says there are many practical tools that can help you expand your awareness, which includes meditation, which includes mindfulness, and in addition, this self-aware approach. This would include prescriptions like be passionate about yourself, about your life, and also about the experiences you fill in it. So you be choosy, that's it. Secondly, you should remain open to as much input as possible. Don't shut down the feedback loop with any kind of judgment, with rigid beliefs or prejudices. In fact, don't censor incoming data through denial. Examine the other's points of views as if they are your own. And take responsibility for making all the conscious choices. Work on all your psychological blocks, if you have any, like shame, guilt, fear, because they are falsely coloring your reality. So free yourself emotionally. Because to be emotionally resilient is the best defense against growing rigid. In fact, harbor no secrets. They are creating dark places in your psyche. And most of all, be ready to redefine yourself every day. Don't regret the past, it's gone. Don't fear the future. Both will bring misery through self-doubt. Be optimistic. So he says his self-awareness, it isn't passive. It is directly leading to action. So as you ex take steps to expand your awareness, you're naturally finding yourself harnessing your mind's infinite powers to create greater health, happiness, and love in your life. So friends, with these, I, I thank you all that uh, you've uh, participated in such an important topic, and I'm thankful to the Foundation for giving me this opportunity. We love to listen to the other great speakers. Uh, thank you. <laughs>